There were 50 of us. There was joy. There was music playing on the radio. The low signal eventually chewed all three down to a stream of static and no one bothered to change it. No one got up from the couch or out of the kitchen to turn the dial, to ask each other to dance, if only to prove our immobility wrong. This should have been the first clue. If not for the sound of piercing static, the imagination of their discomfort was going to be hard Shoes and lights we forgot to turn off. Faucets and lights we forgot to turn off. Shoes we forgot to tie. Being forgetful. Having an itch. Becoming a scratch. Sweating during the shower. Sweating after the shower. Sweating all the time. The words not coming out right. Slurred speech. Awkward dates, limp dick, a 19-year-old boy hunched over in a bathroom who smells like shit, whose hands have become too shaky to rebuild anything of his own. Maybe people start to stink when they stop being seen, when our eyes are busy with screens and images, and our ears with buds and static. Our noses are our last chance at sense. It was in me. When I went in to check on him, I held his head before the next person to knock on the door screamed. Buggy is ODing. Everyone stormed for an exit. They didn't want to be known by him by shit. When he began becoming dirt, their ears did so much more than their noses. They were our friends once, but that night, their bodies had other places to be, other places to go. Those places were all so far away from here. Maybe the moment, the smell, and the ugliness of him kissing the floor tile leaned into the shower curtain he collapsed into with his hands cupped as though wanting a last reach. Maybe all of that wasn't contagious. But the shame was, maybe he would have wanted all their negative space when he died. I remember how he would sleep with the windows open even when it was 20 below. How he ate with his arms guarding his food. The few times I asked him why all of this, he just said, I don't want to be trapped again. When I saw he was dying, I tried to take him upstairs just so that when they moved him, it was not from basement to casket. Underground to underground is an obituary nobody deserves. In 2015, 583 Minnesotans died from drug overdoses, all moved into the ground beneath gray and white stones, and I hear that when their relatives walk through the paths in all black, they look just like static, and the wreaths and bouquets on their tombstones like dials that no one got up to turn until now when I meet someone. I ask them what they've been listening to. I ask them what they're interested in. Not how many of the graves they've been to. Not how long they're staying. Not how long we will stay for each other. And maybe that's not enough. Thank you for sharing that piece. That was extremely deep, first of all. Um, I want to ask this. Um, I have my own opinion about what I think it is, but it's better for the poet to speak on it. What was that piece about? Uh, Buggy was a friend of mine who I was really close to uh, from a suburb north of here. Um, and that was about a night where he uh, he overdosed uh, when we were hanging out. And um, kind of the other people there being too removed from themselves to really do anything about it. And essentially abandoning me and him mm. in the basement when he died. Uh, but I think more than anything, it's a vessel to do what you can when something is happening. Uh, mm. I have a very hard time with abandonment and kind of the, the rise of disconnect everywhere from people just dying on the street or staying silent on the light rail or on public transit when bullshit happens. Um, 
And so if anything, it's a call to action for these small moments that maybe I wasn't best equipped at the time to deal with an overdosing person, but I know that people deserve the dignity of just staying there when they're dying. You mentioned something about human connection, and I noticed, and I could be wrong, but I think you made a connection between static, Mm -hmm. the TV having static and nobody doing anything about it, and then eventually they do something about it. Like how, you're so young, how could you come up with that connection? How did you put those two together to be able to illustrate the importance of human connection and doing something before it's too late? I guess as an image, uh, the static on the radio came up because it was a real part. And the resurgence of the image of kind of graveyards looking like static when people in black uh, walk between gray and white stones uh, just seemed like the natural grander connection of it. I often, with poems, try to find moments that enlarge a moment. I think there's there's something to me that always feels a little bit wrong about just telling someone something that is hurtful and something damaged without any way to relate it to themselves. And so I didn't want to offer just there's this boy who died in a basement, but rather this is a, a fraction or a segment in something much larger and the transition from a radio signal dying out to an entire graveyard just seemed the the natural way to enlarge it uh, from an image standpoint and a conceptual standpoint. Mm. It's it's one of many images that will stick with me from that poem. And, and thank you so much for sharing it with us today. Thank you.